The goal is not to be perfect by the end. The goal is to be better tomorrow. Simon Sinek. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee S's. We are continuing our discussion on building healthy habits for your writing, especially in this new year, focusing on what we really want to do all year long. A lot of people set a goal to write a new novel. So this is going to be how you do that. You can't just say, I'm going to write a book. You need to come up with achievable steps in the process. One of the quotes we looked at for this episode was the difference between a goal and a wish is writing it down, loosely quoted. Having that goal established and voiced can be a huge step in completing that desire for writing your first novel. So the habit you want to build is to set a goal with an end date, and then after that date is passed, take a moment to analyze. If you achieved it, if it was too easy, if it was too difficult, analyze if it worked and if it helped you. Goals can help you stay focused, it can help you stay on task, and then feel accomplished when you complete them. Because you can look and say, look at this thing I did. I made progress. There is something calculable, almost tangible, about what I have done. If you are feeling like your writing is meaningless, it's pointless, that you're just sort of writing willy-nilly for no apparent reason, set goals for yourself and then accomplish those goals. There are any number of things that you can set a goal to achieve when it comes to writing. One of the most popular is word count, setting a goal to hit a certain word count. So a couple months ago, we had NaNoWriMo. Most people's goal is to write 50,000 words in the whole month. Another type of goal you can set is to hit a certain plot point by a certain time. So you and I have this race to finish our current work in progresses. We've both digitally shaken hands to agree that we would try to finish our current draft of our work in progress by the end of January. Another goal that you can do is filling out a writing prompt book. So especially if you're not writing anything specific and you just want to write, get a book with a bunch of writing prompts and fill it out. Do one a day. That can be the kind of goal that you set. Goals can also be broken down. So I want to read this many books in a year. Therefore, I need to read this many books per week or per month. So somebody who wants to be really ambitious, they want to read 120 books a year. That means they need to read 10 books a month. That means they need to read two and a half books a week. Unless you're reading children's books, in which case, great, go for it. That's going to be really hard. Eh, depends on how much time you have to read. But if that's what you do, awesome. Even smaller goals than that are daily goals. And you try to keep that up as long as possible. So I want to write 100 words every day. There comes a cautionary tale with this one. Beware the burnout. A lot of writers experience this, especially after NaNo. I know I had struggled all the way through December to write anything because I burned myself out in NaNo trying to write, in my case, 2,000 words a day. We will talk next episode about taking your time, healthy procrastination, those kind of things. But this episode, one of the goals you can set is to write a little bit every day. Yes, you want to push yourself to be better, to keep trying, but make it still a realistic goal. There are a couple things to look for when you are creating a goal in the first place. We've said it already. We will say it again. The most important thing with a goal is to set an end date. That will allow you to look back and analyze and see how far you've come since you started and established that goal. And that also, for you procrastinators, that gives you a deadline and a reason to do it sooner rather than later. 
Another thing to look at is having somebody to keep you accountable. An accountability buddy. These go for any type of goal that you have, whether it's weight loss or writing a novel, whatever. Having somebody to poke you once a week or so and go, hey, how'd that chapter go? Do you have anything more for me to read? I have an alpha reader who is very good about asking me for the next set of my book so he can give me feedback so I can make it better next edit. We will be discussing this a little bit more later in the month when we talk about developing a writing community. The next way to set a goal is to keep a calendar. Leg days at the gym, or in our case with our podcast, Tuesdays are days to record our podcasts. That helps me stay focused on the moment. So Mondays are often my self-editing days where I go back through and edit the stuff I need to so I have time to write and I don't need to worry about doing the podcast because I have tomorrow to do that. Focusing each day on a schedule allows me to get the most out of the writing time that I've set aside. And another thing you want to consider when you are creating a goal is to make sure that it is both a challenge but realistic. You want to have something you can actually accomplish because when you accomplish that goal, even if it's a small goal, it will give you a sense of pride, a reason to keep going, to keep pursuing further goals. In my case, I grew up incredibly self-critical and immediately abandoning something if I wasn't immediately good at it. When you're developing a skill like writing, there will be times you won't meet those goals. And that is okay. That is part of growing. That is part of analyzing after that date has passed what worked and what didn't. If you don't hit that goal, we do have some suggestions to keep in mind. First off, celebrate. Even if you didn't accomplish your goal, you did something. You learned something. That is worth a celebration. And notice how you've changed since before the goal. Notice what has changed in your work in progress. If your goal was to finish a novel by spring break and spring break comes and goes and you haven't finished it, you've still written a lot between now and then. You've still made progress and you have changed as an author as you've created this piece of art. The next thing that you can do is lower the bar. There's no hurry. You're not really in a competition with anyone else. So enjoy the process. Set a new goal, lower it just a little bit, and see what you can do with your new goal that you set. You're not going to walk into the gym and automatically be able to bench press 600 pounds. But if you set that bar lower, then you can maintain the enthusiasm to eventually get to that goal in a healthy way without hurting yourself or deciding you dislike the art because the goal is too difficult. So if I were to walk into a gym and decide I wanted to learn bench pressing, which is kind of absurd, I would go in and I would start out with just the bar. No weights, no nothing, just the bar. It's, what, 10, 15 pounds or so. And just work on that. And then once I was comfortable with that, you push yourself a little further, maybe put some five pound weights on either end. So you're lifting 10 extra pounds and you work your way up. That's how you set writing goals. Don't start by saying, I'm going to write an entire novel this month. Start by saying, I'm going to write 400 words a day. And you will get to the point where you can write a novel in an entire month. The next thing to do when you don't accomplish your goals is to try again. Look and see what stopped you. What got in your way last time? Was it the goal itself or was it some life experience that happened? Or did you have a bad month that month? No matter what it is, that's fine. Try again. Just because you don't accomplish a goal you set doesn't mean it has to be the last goal that you set. 
and it does not mean that you're a failure. You have learned something, you have grown, that makes you a success. Now set another goal. Whether or not you've accomplished it, set another goal, work toward that. If you don't have at least one goal in your writing world, it'll be very easy to eh, not write today. So for the next 21 days, we are going to help you build a new habit of setting goals. Set a goal to set goals. That means to set a goal for every day. That might be write a scene every day. That might be write in my journal every day. Write every day or edit every day. Set a goal for every day. Then do the same thing for every week. Every week I want to make sure I edit a chapter. So if you're listening to this on the day of release, January 6th, every day, every week, between now and January 27th. And you should have created a new habit of writing daily, or at least setting daily goals. And your writing will be better with every goal that passes, whether or not you accomplish it. So set reasonable goals, write what you love to write, Learn from every goal that passes and write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>